Hi guys, this is when being in Britain is the most annoying, annoying detail when you're a movie fan. Least of all when you're a Star Wars fan. Um, anyway, a couple of bits of news today, re-Star Wars. In the middle of the night, The Mandalorian, which is the new series on Disney+, Plus, which we're not going to get in this country until the new year, but we don't even know when in the new year, uh, landed. So it's the final trailer because it launches uh, in, a, I think, November 12th or something like that, the series. But also, the creators of Game of Thrones, Benioff and Weiss, or Weiss, uh, have pulled out of doing the next trilogy of the Star Wars films, which I have to confess is a bloody relief because I thought the last couple of episodes of Game of Thrones where they took sole responsibility for the content of Game of Thrones, you know, they had to depart from, I think, George R. R. Martin's original stories or, or certainly embellish whatever his sketches were. I don't think they showed that they had the storytelling bones, actually, to manage Star Wars. And given that Star Wars is in such a fragile state, I mean, it really is... I think that's probably a blessing. Um, so anyway, they've said that their nine-figure deal at Netflix, which means that's over a hundred million dollars, oh, bloody hell, means that they're too busy. Anyway, so I'm here to review The Mandalorian's uh, new trailer. As I say, this is from The Mind and the pen of Jon Favreau, who I have a few mixed feelings about. I'm really fond of him because I like him in the Marvel films. I haven't been an enormous fan of his films. Uh, Jungle Book, yeah. Lion King, a bit better, but yeah. Um, and as I say, I liked Iron Man, and he was obviously instrumental. So he's, he's clearly, he's a pivotal figure in the billion dollar franchises that are successful. But uh, The Mandalorian is, is claimed to be his, you know, he's a, he's a sort of die-hard Star Wars fan from young. Uh, he was a Dungeons and Dragons freak when he was a young lad. Um, and I think that whole idea of sort of universe creation, what have you, he's been given sort of quite free reign, I think, by George Lucas and uh, Lucasfilm and Kathleen Kennedy to uh, play with this toy. Um, of course, it stars Pedro Pascal, the guy from... Game of Thrones and from Narcos, who we are fans of in this household, and we loved, even Nadia loved, the first trailer for The Mandalorian. But when are we going to see it in the UK, guys? Does anyone in the States know? I mean, Disney Plus haven't even tried to announce a date when it's going to launch. What, what, what platform's going to carry it here? Is it going to be Sky? Who's, how are we going to get it? Are we going to, is it going to be a streaming service? What, what's going to happen? What's going to... <laughs> I'm on my own because the girls are in bed. Shot. It's a world more peaceful since the revolution. It is a shame that your people suffered. Bounty hunting is a complicated profession. They said you were coming. They said you were the best in the Parsec. Would you agree? Um, Werner Herzog, what a brilliant addition. He's such an odd guy. He uh, is actually a director, and uh, he, years ago he directed um, Klaus Kinski eating a shoe because they had some bet about something. 
So yeah, he did that. Uh, Werner Herzog, incredibly eccentric, but brilliant casting, genius casting. I'm so delighted that someone like Werner Herzog even believes that there's a need to be in something like this. Um, Pedro Pascal there, not saying much other than just all that sort of eloquence and all that sort of huge build up and all of that stuff kind of, and then dealt with with just a, that's good. I like that because that suggests that this might have some wit, some fiery wit. Here's the thing that I get worried about with Disney in any capacity, is that because it's Disney, I mean, the only thing I can think that's an exception to this is things like Guardians of the Galaxy, is that because it's Disney, um, will they sort of round off the edges and soften the edges? Because I think what there is available in this is a really cracking, sizzling, uh, you know, the, the best of what Westworld, the first series had, which is that sort of clever, you know, um, innovative, uh, you can't believe actually it's going to, it's willing to go to those levels of not just violence, but sort of double crossing and, and, and shock, shock value. Um, and I, I you know, good, a good mix of, of, of creatures, a good mix of tech, a good sense of that battered realism that we, you know, is, is the best hallmark. And I, I know we're on our own in thinking this, but we felt Solo delivered that more than even The Force Awakens or The Last Jedi. I wonder how much of Pedro we're actually going to see. Uh, you know, obviously he's part of that the, that group that Boba Fett was, the bounty hunter. I do love the bounty hunter. And of course, the most obvious thing they're riffing on there, and you could feel it in a lot of the whip pan shots and the sort of dusty uh, environments, uh, is the whole Western thing. And I think that's rich. I think it's rich. Because, of course, in the world of bounty hunting, uh, if you think of Han Solo and Chewbacca, you know, good and bad aren't quite so easily identifiable. And I think that was one of the kind of cleverest things in the first ever Star Wars film when I was a boy, was the notion that, yeah, Han Solo, we liked him, but he was a rogue. And he was, he was kind of not just good, he was bad too. So, you know, I think exploiting that seam is a good thing. Yeah, I think that was good. It wasn't as exciting as the first trailer. I think the first trailer, I preferred the music. The music gave me much more of a sort of sense of menace and incoming excitement. Whereas this kind of just sort of settles us into the world a little bit more. But um, my only frustration is I've got, I've got a bloody clue when we're going to see it.